there. I like to go in early a little bit just to be able to say hello and all those good things. If you are watching this by rerun, by video, and this is your first time, thank you so much. And I really appreciate it. Make sure you do something for me. And not just for me, but for our whole entire channel and our whole entire post today because it's touching lives of people. Make sure if you're on uh, my channel that you just smash, crash that uh, subscribe button because that that makes a huge difference. Just smash it right now, I'll see it. And make sure that you also hit the like button. Sometimes if you like something, you don't hit the like button. Sometimes we don't do it because oh, we're moving so fast. Hit it. If you hit it now, then you got the like out the way or the hearts. If you hit it, you got it out of the way. And also, if you got somebody that you know that you can share this with, share it because what we share shows we care. It lets people know what you're listening to and the kind of things that you're listening to. So uh, make sure you do that. And also, hello, everybody that's coming in, all my friends and people that I know and people that I miss. Thank you so much. I'm Dr. Ed, Ed Montgomery. Thank you for being here with me today. This is my master key class. And something disturbed me today. Got up this morning. And of course, the first thing I do, I don't pick up the cell phone. I don't pick up an iPad and I don't want to handle any kind of news because it can invade your life. First of all, the news will invade your life one way or the other. It'll either go through cell phone uh, or a little bling or pop up. So I always keep that thing, that button to where it, it, it's vibrating, but I don't let it turn on until a certain time. Finally learn that. You'd be surprised what technology can do. But after I came out of uh, meditation and that time of learning a little bit, I finally turned on the news because I, know, I knew I was going to watch it. I knew I was going to see what was going on, what happened overnight. And I saw several articles. One of the articles that disturbed me. And when I say disturbed, I mean it, it, it brought an awareness of what's going on in our lives every day. You're here in what I call my sanctuary. This, this is where church is for me uh, right now. And so you're allowing us to come into your home. And guess what we're doing? No, we're not bringing church to you. We're actually joining in church with you because there's church right there in your home, if you want, want to use the terminology. So we're coming together and what we're doing, we're broadening this energy. This is what tonight is about. So as you come in and you're here for the first time, just type in first time in the comments. That lets me know you're here for the first time. And, and also type in your city and state where you're from. I'd I love to know. I got up this morning. And I began to read the statistics of what's been happening while people are in their homes, while they've been just quarantined away. And believe me, things being locked up in a sense, can't get out, has taken its toll on people. Yes, the violence that is happening in the homes up 70, between 74 and 76%. What do you do? People are not knowing how to handle their emotions, their feelings, their passions. But more than anything, they said, was it 35% went up? Oh, see, that's Siri. I, I always ask Siri those certain questions. She's up there listening to me. 35% have changed alcoholism or alcohol, just have increased in the sales of alcohol. 35, alcohol sales have increased 35%. Liquor has increased 75%. Yes. There's something called, um, is it a spritzer? Seltzer. 
hard seltzer. That's what it's called. The sales have zoomed over 450% since uh, I think around the middle of March or the moment when they finally start locking every, you know, everybody got to stay in, in March. And so all of these things are beginning to happen in a domino effect. People are dealing with stress like you would never believe. Listen, when an animal is out in the field and say you got a zebra and the lion's going after the zebra, the zebra's got to make a decision, either to fight or, to, or flight. If the zebra gets caught, the zebra's going to fight with its hood as best as it can. But if not, the, eat, the zebra's going to run. That zebra has got to get away. So everything in that zebra, the, 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 the watering of the mouth, it dries up. All the energy of the body is put into running. This is what happens when we come under stress. Now, there's nothing wrong with that kind of stress. But once the lion can't, maybe can't outrun the zebra, and the zebra, they get to a safe place, the lion turns around, the zebras relax, and they begin to graze again until the lion decides to try to come back again. So what the zebra does, it forgets all about the stress level, the, the stress level in that zebra's body that tensed it up and enabled it to run at that such a hard pace now begins to relax. Here's what's different about us and zebras. We play the picture of the lion coming at us. One hour, two hours, six hours, eight hours, all day. We go to sleep sometimes with it. And we wake up in the morning hoping that's going to become better. And we find ourselves looking at the lions of what are these bills going to look like at the end of this month? Am I going to have a job? They're getting the news that the job is not there. There might be a change. How are they handling uh, going in and signing up for unemployment? If you can. All of these things are taking place every day. And the stress level is so high. We were not designed to live with this kind of stress on a 24-hour basis. Not at all. Then I turned around and I got and got more statistics. Yeah, I'm just loaded with statistics tonight, right? I I I, I looked around and they, and they said something. African American people are 14 percent of the population here in America. Out of all of the COVID-19 deaths, it's been 60 percent African Americans, from what I understand, that have black and brown people that have transitioned from this planet. It's to the point now, I think maybe each of us, I hear people talking about, oh, it's just a hoax, it's not real, I haven't seen anything. Well, we have. I think all of us have, have gotten some notice for an online funeral of someone that we know or that we heard about. And when we ask the question, what was it? And that word comes over coronavirus COVID-19 and here's something that we've got to deal with that stress level stays once again right there what am I going to do how, do I, how am I going to live? What is life going to be like? I'm watching people going back into business. I've been talking to all people, all kinds of people, black people, white people, Latino, uh, indigenous people. I've been, I've talked to, I, I've been listening to how even in the Asian community, and the Asian community is now even going after unemployment. They never used to. They were very self-sufficient people, but now even in that Asian community, the restaurants are boarding up. Something we're looking at what might become 20% uh, unemployment. But listen to this. This is what's causing this stress to just keep building up inside of us. And the reason is because we can't stop the picture. We can't stop the show. And now what we're hearing is 
we got to go back to work. The government is saying you have to go back to work. And people were saying, well, what about the COVID-19? You got to go back to work. What's, what's going to happen? Well, here's what I'm getting ready to tell you here. It's why you're going to have to strengthen, change, renew your mind and how we think about things. Because I believe that we have reached a place in history, especially among people of color, is we, this is our time of choosing a fork in the road, finally. What is about, what are we, what are we about? Well, that's the question. What am I about? What are we about? I think now we're about to look in that mirror and begin to see what changes am I about to make right now? I've talked with people, people who are who have businesses out of Europe struggle. They're wondering what's going to happen in the future. People of all races, backgrounds. But one of the reasons they say that that percentage of death from COVID-19 is high among African Americans because many of your African Americans are working in, in areas for the city, for hospitals, part of first responders. First responders and, 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 and also those who are on that uh, front line, those are your grocery workers who are coming in. Those who are working on that front line who are uh, not just in the hospitals and not just the doctors and nurses who have to wear the masks, but the record keepers, the person who's, who's cleaning the bedpans, the one that's mopping the floor. Not knowing what's going to happen once they get home. Where was this virus? What's going on? And people have a tendency to say it's a hoax. No, we all know of somebody who has transitioned because of this thing. And if it wasn't because of COVID-19, the stress levels are becoming so high in people that if they're dealing with underlying, uh, uh, underlying diseases and sicknesses, it's changing. And not only on top of that, but of course they say African Americans, you know, are dealing with the high blood pressure already, the heart and, and, and those various things. But we can't fix, we, it's going to take some time to fix those things. How do we fix those things? We can't just go up, uh, down the street and get a kale shake and it's fixed. No, this is going to take some mind work. It's going to take some. It's going to take some thinking, some some thinking and rethinking. If I was in politics, I would be sitting down. How is this? How should I rethink politically? What happened when that money came out? Who got it first? How do I get it? Why wasn't I in the position to get it? When we think as far as education, what is education going to be like? When we think about when we and, and 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 not only that, how we think about education and how we think about politics. But one of the things is how do we think about our attitudes? What are the tools we can have that will help me to pull this stress level down? You say go find me a job, give me some money, I can pay my bill. That stress level will come down for a while, but you have to understand something. That stress level is we're seeing now is not necessarily tied to always to, to a lack of money. It's all of these things like a perfect storm that's coming at us one that's all at once. And we're looking at this thing that's called this this virus. And where before they were, you know, it's going to go away, it's going to be this, going to, everybody's trying to move back into the position and get the country started. Of course, you got to get the country started again. This is America, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, it is the land of the free and the home of the brave, but it's also built on, it is built on money. It is capitalism. It is money. It is money that goes out of one pocket into the other pocket. This is what this is. You can't have an economy and everybody, and nobody works, nobody's buying anything. So now we're at a place in our lives 
that we have to understand what has to happen here. And that is we are going to have to learn how to live with this virus walking around us. Oh, think not. Think not. Listen to what they're saying. They're saying that this virus itself won't even have a vaccine maybe until 2021. If you're looking for a vaccine in about a month or two and think that you're going to get a vaccine, oh, they'll have it out and, and then I'm headed to the beach and, or I'm headed to, that's not likely to happen. Now they're coming up with treatments and they're having some success at treatments that, that can maybe bring down the uh, some of the symptoms or what we deal with, shorten or the time. This is good. But you know what we fail to realize that even HIV, you've got treatments. I think it's been, what, 40 years? And still there's no vaccine against it. Vaccines are unpredictable. We don't know what's going to be. The only thing we can do is to control the movie in our heads right now. And this is where we have to focus on. And we can't let, and, 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 and that right there is going to have to change. And it's going to change just how we view God. It's going to have to change. How do we view God? How do we see God? Because if you're a person of faith, and I assume if you're listening to me rant tonight, then you probably just got a little bit of faith in you. Somebody shout hallelujah, praise the Lord. If you got that, you know that there's something that has to shift, something that has to change. Because you can't fight merely a COVID-19 virus. And notice what it is. It's actually called a nouveau coronavirus, which means it's a new virus. It's something that we've never seen before. And that's why it took us by such surprise. We had never seen it before. Science had never seen it before. So when you come up with a silent enemy, a virus you've never seen before, then you're going to have to have a God that you've never seen before. If you got a bigger enemy, then you've got to have a bigger God. And that bigger God begins up here in how we think. It's a passage that says, where sin abounds, grace doth much more abound in the King James uh, language and vernacular. In other words, where we mess up or where we're not aware of things or where we have missed the mark, grace abounds over that. No matter how deep the problem or how much the problem tries to rise up, grace rises up higher. Grace is gift. Grace is mercy. Grace is the ability to handle things under fire. That's why they call it grace under fire. And that grace under fire comes from how we visualize our lives and how much in harmony we can bring our lives, our, our, our lives in line with God. But if your concept of God was pre-virus and you're wondering what happened, I hear people, I've heard some people tell me, well, you know, we went back to church this past Sunday. I said, fine, that's wonderful. I said, but, I, you know, we as a people right now, we have to wait a moment. Let me see what's, what's here. Well, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah, that means your conversation. That means when it, walking by faith, not by sight does not mean a fool. You never leave your brain at the, at the door of the church. We walk by both. The goal is to ultimately stop walking by faith until we see Christ face to face to where we walk now and we walk by sight. That's what the goal of going to heaven and all those things are, is to walk by sight. 
to be able to see. This is what the Apostle Paul says in chapter, in chapter uh, 13 of 1 Corinthians, that our goal to be face to face so that we will know God even as God knows us. So it says that we know God. We know what God is to us. We know how God knows us as we begin to expand our thinking concerning God. You say, but well, God never changes. I, I beg to differ. God does change. Now, from God's point of view, God does not change. What God is does not change, but we don't know what God is. We see God, all of us, you, 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 you can push it and you know what I'm talking about. Every one of us sees God in a different way. We don't see God like we saw God 10 years ago or 15 or 20 years ago. Back during the time of David, uh, the giant killer, back during the time of the Old Testament, look, you're looking at almost 3,000 years ago. How they saw God was they saw themselves on the earth. They didn't necessarily sit and talk about a planet or anything. They were on the earth. And up above the earth, it was like a dome. Up above, there was, there was the air all around them, the trees. And then on top of that was atmosphere. And then there was the blueness of the sky, which was like a dome. And at night, the stars would come out. And they saw the stars as up at the top of this dome. God was viewed as someone who sat a little bit on of top of the dome, on a throne. However, um, the Hebrew people envisioned a throne. However, Pharaoh saw a throne. So they looked at God as king of kings, as, as lord of lords. And they said God sat on his throne and the earth was his footstool. So they clearly saw God with hands and legs and arms and feet. This is how they explained God. But they saw it as a dome. Flash forward 3,000 years to right now. First of all, we don't believe, first of all, we don't believe that the earth is flat. At least most of us don't believe that the earth is flat. We believe the earth is round, spherical shape, like a top. It's spinning. Not only that, but we also realize that what's above, what's above us, are the stars are the same thing as our sun. We believe there's a potential of multiple planets out there. We believe that there are billions of galaxies. There's billions of stars in our galaxy and billions of galaxies out in the universe. So to put God in a little chair and sit him there with a scepter in his hand in the concept of a king made sense back then, but it doesn't make sense now. Even we know and can understand atoms and particles and quantum theory and physics. We even, we think like that. So we need a God that's bigger. Well, God doesn't change. God does change. As we change in our thinking and in our education, we have to have a God that at least comes up to uh, our thinking and our discovery of him. We begin now to understand that God is not just protecting this little planet, that God is, 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 is the universe. God is everything. God is the energy that holds this entire planet together, this entire world together. And it is even God that understands that COVID-19 is on this planet. Our concept of God changes. Scriptures never taught us that, that we would not deal with troubled moments and uh, troubled times. It never said that if we had faith in God, that if we believed in God, or as we talk about, believe God that we would never go through these things. As a matter of fact, we were told we would walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the valley of the shadow of death. Do you think death is not around you? But it is our faith that we hold on to, our faith in a God that is bigger than any mountain, any problem, any virus, this is how we hold on to it. But now we begin to understand, we're not waiting on this God 
just to wave his hand and blow it all away. You've heard me say it before, because I believe if he could blow it away, he could have kept it from coming in in the first place. Our lives change. Our thinking changes. I was, I was reading earlier about the story of the children of Israel that had come out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of bondage. When they got out of Egypt, they got to the point. I'm checking my numbers, make sure because I'm not going to go over my time. I'm going to respect the time. Anyway, they were coming out of Egypt, out of bondage. And they got to the Red Sea. Moses, of course, split the Red Sea, went on across. They all went across. But then it took 40 years, basically, to get into the promised land. The goal was to get to the promised land. The goal was to get to a new way of living. But Moses was not their, their, their leader, was not able to take them into the promised land. And they almost fell apart. We're now in a position in life. Our world has changed. We're not looking for a leader. And I got news for you, not even in human flesh. We're not even looking for a savior. What we are looking for is learning to know who our God is and to let that God take possession of who we are and we possess who God is and realize that now, no longer are we slaves coming out of Egypt that have to be talked to as slaves, treated like slaves, looked upon as, 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 as slaves to our ignorance and slaves to our lack of, 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 of what we don't read, what we don't know. It's now time for us to begin to learn what is it? How does this world works? How does this economy works? How does these poli how does this politics work? Church, ladies and gentlemen has paused for a moment, not for us merely to congregate, but to communicate. This is where our spiritual leaders come in. Every single one of your spiritual leaders. And I think we're taking on that spirituality now that you realize that God does not move everything in order to make life work for us. We never grow. We, we would never accomplish anything. Yes, we're going to have to learn how to live with that virus. We're learning it every day. They're telling us to wash our hands. But what did your grandmama tell you when you was out there playing it outside, playing with them little ants and, 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 and sandcastles and mud pies? What did she tell you when you walked in the door? Wash your hands. That's what my grandmama told me. Don't come in here. I'm ready. Wash your hands. And then she come in there and wash to make sure. And, you know, I turn the water on and stick my fingers in there. And she said, if you don't wash them hands, boy, and get that soap and get the soap and, and keep on, keep on, keep on. See, we were taught. They taught us. Distancing. You don't let everybody in your space. There's going to come. You, I'm, we're watching people with the mask. Masks don't bother me. Do they bother you? The mask is not for you anyway. Somebody else's mask is for you. The mask is, is a sign in a sense of respect, my brother and my sister. That you respect my health. Social distancing, I like to call it physical distancing because social distancing um, means that I'm distancing myself socially. No, we can still socialize. We've got to be imaginative with what we do. That's why these sessions are so important right here. I thought about it. I said, this is not just about me teaching a class. This is about connection with people. Connection with people. Moses came out of that problem, came out of that out of, out of Egypt as slaves. He talked to them as slaves, dealt with them as slaves, encouraged them as slaves. And God wouldn't let Moses go into the promised land with him. Why? Because they did not need a leader of the slaves. They needed a Joshua. 
And that scripture in, in, in Joshua chapter one says, and God told Joshua, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I'm going to establish your time now. I think we're at a new time. I think we're at a fork in the road concerning religion. I think we're at a fork in the road about challenging us how we do church. I think we're at a fork in the road about what are we about to learn? I think we're at a fork in the road. As when we walk into the doors of a church, when we come in, when we come together, what are we really, really looking for? Are we looking to be entertained? Are we looking to be made feel good? Because we're going to get that. They're coming up with different ways of entertaining us. That's not going to change. Our society is going to have to understand something. And we're going to be living with this thing. Stories told about these three Hebrew boys, and before I go into it, and I don't even know if I have enough time to go into it. The time on month might be up, and, and you may have some questions. But if you got a question, ask it. Get in the comment. Type that question in. I'm going to ask in just a second. But before I ask if there are any questions, if there's no questions, there's nothing for me to answer. Maybe or just comments or talk, and we can just talk for a few moments. Because I'm really interested in this time. This is a time when we exchange. I believe there's a certain amount of energy, a certain amount of imagination here. That's why this is so important that we make this connection. When you do it, make sure that you keep that connection going. I don't just like to say share an offering. You can go to myalc.org, myalc.org. So it's going to take me less than um, 160 seconds. Myalc.org. Click the donate. You can get here. If you're on the app, you can click the donate button on the app, and it'll take you right there. And it shows you. It's so easy. It's so simple. And if not, you can turn around and give right now and text to give. Right in that message box, put amount, put the amount and the two, put the number, and that number is 713-742-2035. That's 713-742-2035. And you can text it in get like that. Alright. Before I go, let me check my time because I got my I I promised people, I said I am not gonna be too long on this. But if you got a question, is there a question out there? Because I, no. Okay. What I hope and what I pray is that your dreams will begin to come true even out of this. Even out of this. John chapter 16 says something. Uh, it talks about Jesus. Jesus said, no longer am I going to be talking to God for you. Because the disciples used to ask Jesus, Jesus, we need this, we need that. And Jesus would say, all right, I will pray the Father for you. Jesus told the disciples on he was about to leave. He said, I'm getting ready to go now. No longer are you all going to talk to me to talk to God. He said, from this point on, you talk to God. That's what Moses was talking about, Joshua. God is saying, it's now time for you to know and make that connection with this God that is so huge and that is so big. That's what that's about. Out of this time, uh, it's going to come new ways of thinking. Out of this time is going to come uh, new concepts of business. But you're going to have to reel your mind in. Now, let me tell you how you do it. I don't know. Do I have time to do it? Yeah. Let me tell you how you do it. Number one, don't be afraid to ask for help. While you're on this internet, listen, people are going to start finding uh, the spirituality like they've never found it before. They're going to find it. You're going to flip through. Find what feeds your soul. Don't be afraid to explore your spirituality. Don't be afraid to realize that your God is bigger. Hey, 
I feel good. Listen, I can get just as happy as the next person. You don't understand. I come from a Baptocostal background. You don't know what Baptocostal is? Pentecostal, they, it, they shout like this. <laughs> Baptists, they slow it down to a little old draw like that. So that's Baptocostal. But yet they can get happy and they can shout all over the place. Listen, I love to get happy and get a good shout. But let me tell you something. I love to also have a good meal. If I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat good. And that's what I want to make sure about in my spirituality. Second, learn to meditate. Take the time to meditate. To quiet your brain, quiet your mind. Quiet everything. You got, I, know you got, uh, I know you got a secret place in your house that you can get away from all. I know the kids, everything. But you got to start practicing, learn how to quiet your mind. So you can learn how to quiet your mind even when everything is around you. Thirdly, get on Facebook or, or whatever you can. I, I know you say people say get off the get off the internet. Well, let me say before I tell you that, uh, not get off the internet. I was gonna tell you get on face, get on there and, and connect with people. But before you do that, that third one, and I'm gonna just leave it at the third because my time is up. And that third one is this: you gotta turn off that news. You gotta turn it off. You gotta listen. You gotta decide how much you're gonna get. I'm learning now. Ten, maybe fifteen minutes of it is enough. Is all I need. Well, I need more. Okay, 10 to 15 minutes. Today. Tomorrow I might get into a little bit more. But I'm at least take another day. Take a day and 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 let go of it. And let my brain come down from that stress level. Listen. I believe above all things that your life will prosper. Prosper is having your mind set. And realizing we may we have may have to go through this storm, we have to walk beside this virus. But out of it all, the Lord, my God, see my God. What God is that? How you see God? How big your God is? According to your faith, be it unto you. Listen, my time is up. I got to go. Were there any questions before I left? Before I leave? No. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you next time, Sunday, 10.30 a.m. I'm going into part four, four, conclusion of my new life because that's where we're headed into, a brand new life. I'll see you then. <laughs>